Hi there, this is Harry and welcome back to my advanced English lessons with Harry. And we try to help you to get a better understanding of the English language, how you can use all sorts of expressions, collocations, phrasal verbs to improve your conversational and business English skills. So what have I got to you today in this particular lesson? Well, today we've got advanced collocations to describe sounds, advanced collocations to describe sounds. And as always, I've got a, a list of them ready for you. In fact, I've got 13. Some say lucky, some say unlucky, 13. I'll go through them and then we'll go back to them one by one and give you an example so you can practice it. Okay, so here they go. And remember, it's all to do with sounds. A small voice. A trembling, shaking voice. A squeaky voice. A husky voice, a gruff voice, muffled voice. Utter a word, slur your words, a broad accent, trace of an accent, peels hoots, gales of laughter. They're all the same. Stony silence. And then finally, an eerie silence. Okay, so let's go through them one by one. A small voice. Well, a small voice can be somebody who's battling against lots and lots of people who are talking about one thing, they're all supporting each other. And you're the lone small voice that says, Excuse me, I don't agree. A small voice, a little whisper. You're not so sure whether you should speak up or whether you can't speak up because everybody's in favour of the boss and you're the only one who disagrees. A small voice in the wilderness. A trembling or a shaking voice. Oh, trembling or a shaking voice. Well, a trembling or a shaking voice, usually the type of voices we use or we hear when somebody is really nervous. Oh, oh, I don't know what to do. They're really scared. They're ashamed. They're embarrassed. They're shy. So, you know, perhaps before they make a speech or at a round table when you're asked by all the people present, okay, well, I think we'll introduce ourselves one by one. The words you hate to hear because your voice starts to tremble and you start to shake a bit because you're not so comfortable speaking in English or you're just not so comfortable speaking in public. So a, a shaking or a trembling voice. And so just to remind you, if you enjoy this lesson, please remember to, to like it and subscribe to the channel because it's really, really important. It helps me a lot. So just press that button and subscribe to the channel. Okay, let's get back to the lesson. A squeaky voice. Excuse me, excuse me. A squeaky voice. You hear it on the tube or you hear it in the restaurant or the cafe and you look around to see where it's coming from, expecting to see a little mouse on the floor. So a squeaky voice is somebody who's very silent, doesn't like to speak up or doesn't like to raise their voice. So a squeaky voice, like a door opening. A squeaky voice. A husky voice. Huh, husky, deep, deep husky voice. Somebody's got a sore throat and likes to talk with a little bit of authority. They've got a real husky voice. Some people have a husky voice just naturally. Other people have to try and pretend or to make the voice sound a little husky. But indeed, if you have a very bad cough or cold, your voice can sound a little bit husky because of the illness. So a husky, deep voice. A gruff voice. Well, a gruff voice is usually not so much angry as a little bit short. What do you want? Now, that's a little bit gruff. So he spoke to her in a gruff voice. Really, really, what do you want? But just get out and leave me alone. So a little bit gruff or a little bit in a bad mood. So... Often our parents have sounded like that when we've been asking for something repeatedly. Yeah, so a gruff voice. He can be a gruff person all of the time, but normally it's just temporary. So he spoke to her in a gruff sounding voice. Gruff, like almost like a dog. Ruff, a gruff voice. 
muffled voices. Muffled voices could be heard behind the door. So it's the noises you hear of people passing by your door or your noises you hear passing by the hotel room when you're staying in a hotel. You can't clearly dis- distinguish who they are or what they're saying. You just hear a lot of sounds coming from the other side of the door. I hear them all the time. I have people coming in out of the main door, which is near the entrance to my apartment. So I often hear muffled voices late at night. I don't hear exactly what they're saying, but I know there are people coming and going. So I hear the the muffled voices and the muffled sounds of conversation. To utter a word, or often we use this when there's a negative, don't utter a word. So this is something that the teacher might say to the class. I want you to sit there silently, Open your books, but nobody utter a word. I don't want to hear any sounds. I've heard enough of you for one day. So just please get on with your work in in class. I'll be back in five minutes. And remember, don't utter a word. Okay, so use it in that negative way, not to say anything, not to be heard. I don't want you to utter anything. Okay, don't utter a word of this to your sister. Don't tell her what we've agreed. It's a surprise. You want to surprise her for her birthday. So don't utter a word. Don't tell her that she has to be here on Friday or Saturday because it'll only spoil the surprise. So to utter or don't utter a word. To slur your words. Well, when somebody slurs their words, it often can be when they've had one or two glasses of wine or beers more than they should have. And somebody's trying to stand up in the middle of a wedding to make his best man speech and he's had a couple of whiskeys or beers to try and calm his nerves and then he begins to slur his words where nobody can hear clearly what he's trying to say. So, you know, to slur can be because of the effects of um, excessive alcohol, but some people can slur their words because they don't speak very clearly. They don't open their mouths and all the sounds come out so they can slur their words because they keep the lips closed and they don't really and you can't hear them okay so when you're speaking particularly publicly you have to let the sounds out so not to slur your words a broad accent well a broad accent can be anything lots of countries people have very broad accents If you were going to the UK and you visited a city like Liverpool or Manchester, you'd hear people with very broad accents. Liverpool! Yeah, they have a broad accent. It's very easy to understand it, okay? He spoke with a broad accent, very distinguished. You might not understand which city it came from, but you'd understand that the accent was broad and it gave you some difficulty in understanding everything that that person was trying to say. So, so a broad, he spoke with a broad Manchester accent. He br- spoke with a broad Italian accent. La! Yeah, so they, you can understand clearly where he comes from, but you might not understand all the words because of that broad accent. He spoke without a trace of an accent or with a trace of an accent. So you can use it positively or negatively. So if you were listening to some audio tape and trying to understand the the tape and explain it to a friend, you might say, it really was a nice recording. There was a trace of an accent, but it's very hard to understand exactly where it was from. But there was a trace of an accent. Or I'd like to be able to stand up and speak without a trace of my accent. So somebody might come to me looking for some professional help or assistance in trying to uh, get rid of the accent that they have. So to have a trace of an accent, so a little bit of your accent comes through, or to speak without any trace of an accent, so that you speak in a very monotone way. I prefer somebody with a little bit of an accent. There's nothing wrong with an accent. It's always more about pronunciation. Okay, and the next we have about laughter. Peals, hoots, and gales of laughter. They all mean the same thing, okay? So peals and hoots are those big laughs you hear from a hall, perhaps if there's a professional comedian uh, on the stage and he's telling some jokes and then 
one or two people start to laugh and then three or four people start to laugh and then one side of the room laughs and then the other side of the room laughs. So you have peals of laughter. (laughs) (laughs) Hoots, hoots of laughter or gales. Oh, like the wind blowing it through the, uh, the auditorium. So gales, hoots, and peals of laughter, all about the sounds that groups of people make when they start to laugh. Stony silence. Well, this is when nobody speaks or nobody makes any noise or any comment. So, for example, if the boss stood up and told everybody that this weekend and next weekend, everybody's expected to work because of the big order. And when he looked around the room, there was a stony silence. Nobody commented. Nobody asked any questions. They all looked at the floor, looked at the table. They didn't make eye contact with him because they were all either shocked or annoyed or surprised that the boss would tell them that they had to work Saturdays and Sundays for the next two weeks. There was a stony silence. And finally, an eerie silence. Well, an eerie silence is ooh, an eerie sign when you walk into a cold, old church and there's nobody in the church at all. You open the door, there's a little creaking of the door and you look inside, nobody to be seen. There's an eerie silence as if it's occupied by ghosts and you can hear the wind blowing a little bit or whistling. Yes, a very eerie silence. And you get that sort of noise when you, or lack of noise, when perhaps you're walking through a big forest, okay? You're, there's nobody around, no traffic, no bird sounds. You're deep in the forest and there's a eerie silence. And you're a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit scared, a little bit afraid, and the hairs on the back of your neck almost stand up with that eerie silence, very silent almost whisper. Yes. Okay, so eerie silence. Okay, so these are all collocations describing sounds. Let me give them to you one more time. A small voice, small voice in the wilderness. A trembling or shaking voice when somebody is nervous. A squeaky voice, just naturally some people have a little squeaky voice, not something not strong. But then the opposite, somebody can have a deep, husky voice, lots of strength, like somebody, an army sergeant. A gruff voice, when somebody can be a little bit angry or annoyed or sound a little bit angry or annoyed. What do you want? Muffled voice. This is sounds that are not uh, distinguishable. To utter a word. To utter means to say something or not to say something. Somebody might tell you, don't utter a word. To slur your words when you've had one or two glasses of wine that you shouldn't have had, to slur your words. A broad accent. A trace or without a trace of an accent. Peals, hoots, and gales of laughter. Stony silence. And finally, an eerie silence. Okay, so as I said, they're all collocations connected with sounds. So try them, see how you can use them, make sure that you can understand them. If you want to contact me, do so on www.englishlessonviaskype.com. Always happy to get your comments and to help you where we can help you. Okay, thanks for listening. Join me again soon.